And we continue covering the breaking news. In our world lead today, President Biden said the U.S. will deploy additional service members to Germany and redeploy some forces already in Europe to NATO eastern flank allies, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, uh, Poland, and Romania. The president continues to stick by his pledge that he will not send U.S. forces into Ukraine. Here to discuss, Democratic Congresswoman Elaine Luria of Virginia. She is the vice chair of the House Armed Services Committee. Congresswoman, good to see you. You served as a Navy officer for 20 years, operating nuclear reactors as an engineer. What is your biggest fear uh, when you hear that Russian troops have now taken over and are controlling the site of the Chernobyl nuclear disaster? Well, Jake, thanks for having me again. Um, you know, the, the site of the Chernobyl uh, disaster that happened in 1986, um, you know, there's a, a lot of contamination, um, a lot of uh, you know, very difficult work went into uh, encasing uh, essentially that, that exploded reactor core into a sarcophagus, um, essentially encased in concrete. But, you know, this site itself uh, could potentially be weaponized in, in essence if um, there were an attempt to break open that sarcophagus, allow that contamination um, to uh, escape out into the environment again. Um, and, you know, we could see potentially something similar to the, the initial Chernobyl catastrophe that we saw, um, which contaminated a very large region. So I, I know um, you can't reveal classified intelligence uh, that you receive, but more broadly speaking, in terms of the Russian war against Ukraine, the invasion, what are you expecting will happen next? Will, will Kyiv be taken? Will Russia, in your view, occupy all of Ukraine? Well, Jake, you know, I would say that it, it certainly appears that this all-out offensive is an effort um, to not just attack one area, but make a broad offensive across Ukraine. And there are certainly moves, uh, you know, towards uh, Kiev, Kiev. I think that, you know, one of the areas of a lot of concern for me, um, you know, having been a naval officer for 20 years, is looking at the Black Sea, looking at the fact that, you know, an amphibious assault um, appears to be planned or potentially we don't know the latest intelligence um, underway um, in the area of Odessa and that you know, Russia is, is likely at some point um, to take over uh, Odessa and, you know, access to the Black Sea is incredibly important. And, you know, where are U.S. Uh, and NATO ships? Um, you know, reporting shows that, you know, U.S. and NATO ships have not uh, been operating um, in the the Black Sea recently. The, the last U.S. naval vessel, the USS Arleigh Burke um, left the Black Sea in December, but there is a huge, huge U.S. and NATO um, uh, naval force operating in the Mediterranean, the USS Harry S. Truman uh, Carrier Strike Group uh, from here in Virginia, as well as uh, eight uh, additional destroyers, four based in the Mediterranean, four out of uh, the east coast of the United States are operating in that region. And one of my biggest concerns is, you know, the close proximity of these U.S. and NATO vessels operating um, near Russian warships um, and the opportunity for potential um, inadvertent escalation, um, uh, the the opportunity for you know these ships operating in such close proximity, and then those that um, you know uh, ag are aggressive against other vessels. I mean, we saw recently a reporting that uh, a Turkish-owned um, merchant vessel um, was essentially um, struck in the midst of the conflict that's ongoing. So, what is the threat um, to Mar shipping, maritime shipping within the region. And if the mm -hmm. United States and NATO don't have a, a presence within the Black Sea, um, that you know also could be concerning. The UN Refugee Agency says more than 100,000 people have moved within Ukraine. We're, we're seeing some of them start to cross the border into Poland. Uh, this is clearly a potential refugee crisis. How, how concerned are you about that? Well, I think we're all very concerned, you know, about the humanitarian effects of this when we've seen um, photos and videos of families um, who are essentially using subway stations as bomb shelters, apartment buildings that have been attacked and um, the, the traffic this morning um, heading west from Kyiv um, for people ostensibly um, trying to flee the area of potential violence. So, you know, this has the potential to become very devastating and, and already is, I'm sure, for, for many people in Ukraine who have come under this attack from Russia. So that's something that we're watching very closely. I think that providing humanitarian assistance as well as military assistance um, to Ukraine is, is absolutely essential. And then working with our NATO partners, especially those, um, those countries that border Ukraine, um, to make sure that this flow of people trying to escape the violence, you know, 
have what they need. Um, and if there are Americans attempting to escape Ukraine, they, they arrive in Poland. The you know, United States has forces there, um, as do our allies, to allow them to evacuate safely to their home countries. Democratic Congresswoman Elaine Luria from the Great Commonwealth of Virginia, thank you so much. Appreciate your time. Okay. We're also following breaking news out of Minnesota. A jury there has reached a verdict in the federal trial of three of the four officers, former officers now, who are involved in George Floyd's arrest and his death. Stay with us. Energy is everywhere, even in a little seedling, which, when turned into fuel, can help power a plane. At Chevron's El Segundo Refinery, we're looking to turn plant-based oil into renewable gasoline, jet, and diesel fuels. Our planet offers countless sources of energy.